hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. There are a couple of new words that will come up in stop one. First of all, the word mutagenic, mutagenic, and also the word radiation. I'll go through those words quickly. Mutagenic, it's just anything that causes a mutation. So, mutant, genic. So, causes mutation. And the idea of radiation has to do with the electros electromagnetic spectrum. And that's just, you know, your different types of vision. So, gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared, microwaves, and radios, and radio ra waves. waves. Now, which ones are you know electromagnetic, and which ones are which ones belong to your radiation, or which ones are mutagenic? These would be these here: gamma rays, X-rays, and ultraviolet rays. And we'll discuss these three in more detail in this video because the actual doppler itself says discuss evidence for the mutagenic nature of radiation. So we're going to talk about radiation, use three different types of examples, and the evidence that suggests that they cause mutations. So I'll go over each individual first. So again, gamma rays is the first one, and gamma rays would be equal to this spectrum here. And this has to do with, usually with nuclear fission. So often when we break down nuclear material, nuclear decay, it produces these gamma rays. And our example, or our evidence that they cause mutations, come from nuclear-related incidences. First we have Chernobyl, which happened in 1986, and I can always remember when it happened because it happened in April of 1986, and I was actually born in March of 1986. My parents were quite scared because this happened in the Ukraine. This happened in the Ukraine, and the Ukraine is not too far away from Germany, and I was born in Germany one month before this happened, and my parents were actually quite scared that you know, there might have been something that happened that to me. I was still in my developmental, very early age category. And this huge disaster happened not too far away in Ukraine in 1986, one month after I was born. And the reason why they're concerned is because there was a nuclear meltdown. So I've got a picture here of, this is of, I think this might have been of offspring, so of people who were affected by the nuclear meltdown. There was a nuclear reactor in Chernobyl in Ukraine, which more or less exploded in 1986. And we've got lots of radiation that came out of that because it had to do with nuclear fission, and that creates your gamma rays. And your gamma rays basically led to mutations in offspring. So you have your mutations in offspring, and then we can see that by having deformed offspring deformed offspring, which suggests that there were some mutations in the original um, sex cell of the people who are affected. And we said in the last video, we talked about germ cells and how if there's mutation in the germ cells, those will be passed, passed on to the next generation. So people who lived in Chernobyl who were exposed to high radiation, they probably had mutations in their germ cells, which means their babies either, many of them, not all of them, but many of them either had some kind of deformity or the, the levels of miscarriage were also a lot higher. A miscarriage means that the baby itself wasn't born. It was born dead. So people in Chernobyl were affected by themselves dying of cancer more often. So cancer rates were higher um, when it comes to individuals living in close to the, the reactor that exploded. And you had their offspring, so their babies, often either being deformed or the miscarriages being slightly higher. And all of these are evidence that, you know, this gamma radiation, which was emitted by nuclear, we know that gamma radiation is emitted by nuclear um, explosions, and we believe that this caused these deformities. So that's one of the evidence we have for the mutagenic nature of radiation. Now, the other one, which is also to do with gamma radiation, comes from Hiroshima. And Hiroshima happened in 1945, and we had an A-bomb, so an atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. And obviously that was really, I mean, the, the amount of people who died from that atomic bomb directly was very high. You can see this is the city itself after the explosion. There was not much left. It was just completely destroyed. And hundreds of thousands of people died directly. 
and it was a horrible kind of occurrence. In, in, like it was a horrible day in history. But uh, what also happens, people who did survive had the same problems as the people who survived or were close to Chernobyl when it exploded. They had higher rates of cancer or other problems. That was due to mutations. They had higher examples of miscarriages, so they had more of their babies miscarried. That would have been because there would have been a mutation in their germ cells. Also, again, mutations of their babies, so they were more deformed than they should have been on average. That was, again, due to a mutation in the germ cells. So this is the evidence we have that gamma radiation causes mutations. We have the two historical events, Chernobyl in 1986 and Hiroshima bomb in 1945, that both caused huge amounts of problems for the residents that lived in that area, which was due to mutations. The next one is x-rays, and this is also an example of radiation, so x-rays. And obviously, I mean, x-rays should be familiar. We often take these x-rays in hospitals. We want to check that you know, there are problems when it comes to broken bones or anything else. But before we actually knew about radiation and how problematic x-rays might be, we actually used x-rays for anything. So if you actually went to a shoe store, I think this might be in the 1940s, I don't remember the exact day, but back in the day, you, when you went to a shoe store and you wanted to fit a, fit a shoe on, they would take an x-ray in the shoe store to look at your feet, to match your feet with the correct shoe. Right, so x-rays were, were used for everything. Like, the people didn't realize they caused mutations, so they just used it for everything. But then what we found is that people who did that, you know, people who under, underwent these x-rays on a regular basis, they had higher rates of cancer. And also these miscarriages as well in their in their babies. So again, this is evidence that X-rays were causing mutations, and that's why X-rays nowadays. Again, don't be scared about X-rays. Don't be freaked out. If you need to get an X-ray done, get it done, because nowadays we actually use a lot slow, lot lower doses, so lower doses, which means they're less dangerous, and we use it a lot less frequently. Again, when you get your shoes tested, like you know, if you want to have see if your shoe fits you. You don't get an X-ray anymore, so we use it a lot less. So overall, it's fine. the The risk outweighs the benefit. Uh, the benefit outweighs the risk. But yeah, that's another example of how X-rays can cause mutation. And the evidence for that would be that we used to use a lot, and then, and then people that use a lot got higher rates of these different problems. And the last one is UV radiation, and this one most people should be familiar with. UV is ultraviolet rays, and that comes from the sun itself. And how do we know that it causes cancer? Well, obviously, we know that skin cancer is directly linked with UV exposure. And that's because these UV rays, these photons, what they do is they destroy parts of our DNA. And it can be, you know, insertion, deletion, frame shift kind of things where the DNA is then completely different or altered. And that means that you have a mutation happen in your, usually in your somatic cells. These are your often somatic cells. So you, your body cells, which means you have cancer eventually. And we actually have an ozone. So the ozone is like, you know, you've got a planet here. This might be our water and our, our soil. And in our atmosphere, we have this ozone. It's like a nice shield that usually, that usually shields us from the incoming ultraviolet rays. It kind of dampens them. They don't have that big of an impact because it's ozone layer. The ozone layer protect us from it. But we've actually found some areas, usually over the Antarctic, where these ozones, because of human activity, have been damaged. Right, so there's less of it. And we have found higher cases of cancer, so higher cases of cancer, in these areas that are exposed to more UV radiation. So the animals that would be there they are exposed to higher amounts of UV radiation because the ozone doesn't protect it anymore. And that means higher causes, higher rates of cancer in those same areas. Again, this would be an example of how we have evidence that UV light causes cancer. These ozone areas that are depleted, have less ozone, have higher rates of cancer. All right, so quickly summarizing again, we've got evidence from Chernobyl and from Hiroshima that gamma radiation from nuclear decay causes mutations, which we can see in the form of deformities and miscarriages in the offspring, and we can see in higher cancer rates and other problems in the survivors. We also have 
evidence that x-rays cause cancer. This is that, you know, the people who have undergone lots of x-rays in the past have higher rates of cancer. And we also have evidence that UV radiation causes cancer. And this is by looking at the areas that have no more ozone or very little ozone. And individuals exposed to that high amount of UV have higher rates of cancer as well. But hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.